You'd think that the conversation about which foods are considered healthy and which foods aren't would be getting simpler. After all, we know that in general, a low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet is good. It's good for your overall health. It's good for longevity. It's good for reversing insulin resistance. It's great if you're living with any form of diabetes. But as the world of nutritional science learns more and more, the conversation doesn't just get simpler. In fact, it actually becomes more complicated because every time there's a new piece of research, there's new conflict about which foods are actually healthy for you and in which quantities. In this two-part video series, we're gonna be breaking down the facts about one fiercely debated food, and that is olive oil. In the first video, we'll review where the team here at Mastering Diabetes stands, the main points on the ongoing olive oil discussion, and some oils that we know are best to avoid without question. So if olive oil is part of your diet, or if you're thinking about adding olive oil to your diet, then listen up, because this video is gonna be hopefully very informative. Before we wade into this conversation, a word from Mastering Diabetes. We have a system of green light, yellow light, and red light foods, which are designed to provide a simple guide for how to reverse insulin resistance and improve your overall health. And while our team and thousands of people who have transformed their lives with this research can attest to the success of those guidelines, there are foods that sit somewhere in the gray area. For some of these foods, complex research points out that there may be risks associated with consuming them, but there may also be distinct health benefits. And it makes sense. The reason is actually quite simple. The way that food interacts with your biological machine is extremely complex. So as scientists learn more about various biochemical processes, our understanding of human health is constantly evolving. The context is massively important as we discuss olive oil. When it comes to our Mastering Diabetes Guidelines, we tend to lean on the safer side. Until there's an overwhelming body of research advocating any particular food or food group, we don't recommend eating it. But there's also a massive conversation going on about certain foods, especially because they can be tasty and desirable, and yet they do show some promise as potential contributors to overall health. And there's probably quite a few foods that jump into your head when I say this, including things like organ meats, fish, and high-fat plant-based foods like avocados, nuts, and coconuts. And don't forget, semi-processed plant-based foods also fall into this category. What about collagen? What about coconut oil? What about MCT oil? And what about lectins? And the list goes on. The fact is that nutrition is complex. It's an evolving topic, and the new science must be addressed, which is why today, we're wading into the conflict-ridden discussion surrounding olive oil. There are two big questions that come up when deciding if a food is healthy or not. First, is the food itself healthier compared to other common alternatives? And second, are people who eat it healthier than those who do not? We'll address both here. Is it better to cook with high-quality olive oil compared to butter and mayonnaise and dairy fat or other oils? Here, we believe the answer is yes, very much yes. Now, when it comes to oils, at least as they are commonly used in food preparation, we believe that high quality olive oil is among the best possible choices. It has greater nutritional complexity than many other processed plant oils, and it doesn't contain compounds like heme iron, like nitrites, like sodium, and leucine that are found in many other alternatives. However, is it better to use oil-free cooking methods rather than high-quality olive oil? Basically, are people who don't consume olive oil healthier than those who do? We believe the answer here is yes, though we acknowledge that specific conclusive studies on the topic have not yet been done in enough depth to provide a definitive answer. The reason we believe the answer is yes is based off of three factors. First, olive oil is a processed food. No matter how high quality the oil is, it is still a processed food. And most research shows that whole foods maintain more natural nutrients. It's, it's common sense, it's facts, okay? Whole foods is gonna have more nutrients. The olive has more nutrients than olive oil, okay? So these whole foods with their fiber, with all the other vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, phytochemicals, these foods are best suited for the human digestion process compared to processed foods. Secondly, oil is the most calorie dense food on the planet at about 4,000 calories per pound. 
and has a comparatively low density of beneficial nutrients. And third, we have observed that oil is a high fat food that contributes to temporary or situational insulin resistance, causing significant elevations in blood glucose and significantly increased requirements in the hours and sometimes days following its consumption. You're not always gonna detect that right at the moment that you eat oil, but fast forward three hours, six hours, 12 hours, that's when blood glucose starts to rise, that's when insulin requirements start to rise, and that's when it's gonna become very complicated to try and control your blood glucose. This makes it particularly risky for people living with any form of diabetes. It's from this position that we'll be addressing the discussion on olive oil while acknowledging alternative viewpoints and gaps in the research. Now, one more note about the Mastering Diabetes Perspective. In our coaching program, we proudly teach that we are not the food police. We never have been and we never will be. We're gonna support you in whatever choices you believe are best for you. And we're help here to help you choose the right decisions that are gonna move you towards optimal health. If you choose to consume oil, we will look at the research showing what oil is best for your long-term health, will help you use an appropriate amount in alignment with your goals, will help you understand how oil is either helping or preventing you from achieving your ideal body weight. We'll also help you understand how olive oil consumption is impacting your blood glucose and cholesterol. And with that said, we'd likely encourage you to experiment with an oil-free diet so that you can see the impact that it makes and actually measure the positive difference in your blood glucose control that you'll experience in a short period of time. But ultimately, the choice is yours. We'll work with you and not talk or preach at you. So let's get into it. First, let's address some types of oils that are generally accepted as unhealthy oils. There are two families of oils that are generally accepted as unhealthy, which includes oils with a high concentration of omega-6 fatty acids and all hydrogenated oils. Oils with a high concentration of omega-6 fatty acids include soybean oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil, sunflower oil, peanut oil, sesame oil, and rice bran oil. Now, the key problem with omega-6 fatty acids isn't the fact that they're explicitly unhealthy. In fact, omega-6 is a valuable fatty acid that plays a role in promoting inflammation in response to injury. So while omega-6 fatty acids are not harmful per se, it's the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids that is a very important aspect of your overall metabolic health. Too much omega-6 and you can get some unpleasant inflammatory problems. Now you combine that with the fact that these oils have a high calorie density and a low nutrient density, and we suggest that they're worth avoiding altogether. Hydrogenated oils are a second family of oils worth avoiding completely. Hydrogenation is a chemical process that was specifically designed to prolong the shelf life of liquid oils by turning them into solids at room temperature. By hydrogenating liquid oils, food manufacturers can prolong their shelf life, increasing their revenue. Now, the hydrogenation process turns naturally occurring fats into other forms, including trans fats and saturated fats. And since the research is very clear on the negative effects of these types of fats, including the increased risk of cardiovascular disease and cancer, it's better to avoid hydrogenated oils completely. And we haven't even mentioned the third family, which are oils based on animal fats and dairy. This is an entirely separate subject to explore. We tend to recommend avoiding animal products altogether due to their naturally higher concentrations of saturated fat, cholesterol, heme iron, nitrates, nitrites, and other inflammatory compounds. That's before we mention the fact that processed animal products are classified as class one and class two carcinogens. We mentioned more about this topic in our video on the carnivore diet, which you can find right here on our channel. So in this video, we've laid out quite a few reasons as to why you might wanna remove olive oil and other types of oil from your diet. But there's a reason this discussion has a little bit more nuance to it, because the newest cutting edge research may show some health benefits of olive oil. And to learn about that and really get the whole picture, you can click right here to watch part two of this video. But before you do, don't forget to push that cute little like button with your thumb or with your mouth, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel because when you do and when you turn on notifications, uh, by clicking on that little bell icon, you're gonna be notified of more videos as we continue to produce them to give you the latest cutting edge science that can truly be beneficial to your health. We'll see you in the next video.